out and it's a windy day. One of the complaints I've heard about these things was they get pushed around by wind. And it is, I mean, I felt the wind on the SV earlier today. And on this thing, yeah, I haven't noticed it at all. None whatsoever. So, uh, I really don't think wind is an issue, which I don't guess it really could be if uh, you got all these typically older men riding the bikes. Uh, so, I mean, if it's something that you have to fight with, I wouldn't think that, he, that uh, someone who uh, wasn't able to manage the weight of the bike would be messing with it. So, that's not a problem. You don't notice the speed at all. Uh, I mean, the speed feels considerably slower than what I'm actually going. Uh, so that's that's kind of different. Um, yeah, Jamie was right. I am in danger of liking this a lot. But, of course, I like everything outside of uh, a couple bikes. I can come up with ways that I can make it something that I would want to ride. But this thing, uh, as it sits... Uh, is absolutely awesome. This makes me want to get the uh, get a GL 1100. I know it won't have the kick that this thing has, but to take a GL 1100 and make my cafe racer out of it, uh, because I mean the G, the, the uh, not 1800, the GL 1100. I'm sorry, because uh, it's already. Uh, barely naked. Well, let's slow down here. Uh, the GL 1100 is already most naked. I mean, you just take that big wind screen off of it and you throw some drag bars on it, straight bars, something along those lines, or clip-ons, and you've already got a giant cafe racer ready to rock and roll. So that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I just wish I could get... make the radio work. But, sounds like a car horn. It's like the one thing that I'm wanting to check out is the radio on it. And I can't... You know, I guess I can pull over and stop and play with it. But yeah, I like it. So, uh, GL1800 is uh, quite a nice ride. And this is... Well, granted, I do like most everything on two wheels. But this is... Uh, very nice bike. I actually like this better than the, the BMW uh, R1100R or whatever it was, the, the touring bike. Uh, yeah, R. I think it's R. I think R. Well, whichever one it is. The 1100 touring bike. I actually like this better than that as far as just comfort goes and something you can ride. It actually has uh, um, has the hand warmers on it, which is really cool. Uh, it does have the vents that you can open up uh, so that you can be comfortable during the summer, which is a huge bonus over a concourse. Oh, I mean, talk about being toasty. Man, that was ridiculous. The only thing I gotta say I don't like is, I mean, is the windshield. I'm not a fan of windshields, but, uh, but yeah, this thing is... I think it's very nice. Very nice indeed. I see why Yellow Wolf, well, part of the reason, other than the fact that he's a phenomenal rider, why Yellow Wolf can just go flying through at Dill's Gap on uh, one of these, because this is what he uses to trail uh, uh, split bike guys. Well, anybody who wants to have him uh, ride behind him, he does a video where he rides behind him, and then comes back through on the other pass and rides in front of him and has cameras set up on the front and back of his bike and has uh, DVRs actually in the bike or uh, in, his, uh, in his storage and the, the tail bag, the trunk, and the, uh, the saddle bags. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, of course, he did some modifications to it. Uh, the suspension swap on it to make it uh, handle better and all that. But just as a stock motorcycle... Uh, it's actually, it's not like what I thought it would be. I thought it would be, um, uh, not unwieldy, but just that heavy floating feeling, and it does not get that. Uh, it just, 
it just goes. And then whenever you want it, it really goes. Oh, man. Talk about deceptive speed. You know, there is no replacement for displacement. That is for certain. Uh, that is, wow, wow, man, wow. And it's even got reverse on it. That's the other cool thing. 